What's happening? This is Evan Dodd, and welcome to another episode of the Beats for Breakfast podcast. Today, I am joined by my esteemed colleague, the one and only Gold Chain Gamers. What's going on, homie? Man, chill cast. What is <laughs> Oh, yo, man. Yo. Now for a minute, man. My fault. It's my, that's all on my end. My bad. Wait, what happened? The thousand events. Uh, we were trying to get together for it's been a few weeks now. Bruh. Bruh. I'll say this. My, my, mind you, the reason I said what happened is because, all right, check this out. And you guys watching this, you guys are getting just some extra banter here. I have these headphones and only one ear works. I have both earphones in so I can make it look like I'm actually professional right now. But only one weird ear works right now. So if I miss something, I'm like, uh, what? What happened? But, um. See a good ear. I got you. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. But, um, nah, I def I'm definitely glad that you was able to make it to come on because this is... This is a long time coming. We have, you know, we've talked hip hop, we talked gaming, we talked about a whole bunch of things. In fact, we almost had a, a huge debate what two weeks ago in the chill cast about hip hop. So it's 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 a long time coming. But I wanted to ask, you know, you go by the name Sincere on you know YouTube, you know, under the Go Chain Gamers. Like I would say who you know who are you as a like a brand a person and what inspired you to name your channel gold chain gamers well sincere i've been going sincere for a long time mm -hmm. um, and it was based off of Nas's character from belly similar demeanor to that like you know real calm you know so um a couple uh females they you know start calling me sincere and then it just stuck with me. plus back when i had hair i used to have a hook part too so Oh, you had the old classic be belly look. Yeah, I know that sounds crazy. Now I had braids, I had every hairstyle. <laughs> now I'm just completely bald. And I had the hook part. Okay. And, uh, he called me sincere, so it stuck with me, um, my neighborhood, and everything I did was under that moniker, sincere, sincere. So when it was time to you know switch over to making content, I just you know I didn't feel like I needed to change anything as far as my name. You know, it's, it's what I've been called. So. Uh, the Gold Chain Gamer thing was completely different, you know, deal right there. Gold Chain Gamer came from me simply just wearing a gold chain in videos because we called it something else. We called it the Fresh Gamers at first, and it was supposed to be, you know, us trying to blend blend uh, culture, hip hop culture with gaming culture, you know, as far as fashion, just all kinds of things um, that's inside of hip hop culture and kind of weaving it in and out of gaming culture. And so we call it the fresh gamers like you know you dress fresh but it was corny it was corny and when i got i started getting called that i was like well, yo that sounds cool and i didn't think of it so i'm like <laughs> it was a name that was given to me so i said you know what yeah because it still feels like a part of the culture while still maintaining uh some um some basis in gaming and i didn't know that that was a term people use for you know people that just bought a bunch of bs you know, like, you know, the the, the latest BS mm -hmm. gold chain game. I didn't know that when I heard I just wore I literally just wore a gold chain in every video. So um that's how the, the gold chain game. Man, I just took it as you just putting a hip hop culture because it's like that was, you know, as you know hip hop, that was the thing. That's what made you an artist. Like you got your chain. Part of that part of that culture was the, you know, the chain on, you know, the the, the piece that represents, you know, whatever uh click or crew or mm -hmm. whatever even if it was the jesus piece or the cross whatever yeah you had the jesus or you had the you had the rock symbol it's like you had what what you you know what record label back then record labels were like the old organized gangs back then like death row and everything <laughs> had bad boy you, you you had clicks and crews and you represented that click and crew with your chain so it just fit and i didn't really you know i can't take like this, you know, some people ask me, they think like it was something that I sat down and thought about. It wasn't. I just kept seeing it pop up in the chat. Gold Chain Gamer. So I say, you know what? That sounds cool. And it sounds a lot better than the name that I was calling the channel beforehand as far as the Fresh Gamer. So it still fit the, the, the you know, basis of hip hop. So I just ran with it, you know, and I wasn't going to stop wearing gold chains no time soon. So it just felt right. I mean, sometimes that's 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 how it goes. Like you have to go with, you know, how how it feels. And the thing about the thing of what was cool with it, it's like you always had that hip hop feel to it. It's like your intro is literally the Grand Theft Auto theme 
right. sampled. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's like people see Gold Chain Gamers, but then when they actually click on your videos, it's like they literally know, all right, he's for real about this. Like we go already get a feel, but diffusion, you know, I, I felt like I, in gaming, right? Mm -hmm. this was another, you know, I guess you said branded. Another thing was it wasn't a lot of guys from my neighborhood that was just openly into the, you know, not even just gaming, but the industry, anything, you know, they just, if they were, they were real hush, hush, secretive about it. Ooh, don't tell nobody, you know, like, and I thought that was strange, but then over time I understood it because, you know, in that environment, nobody wants to look like, you know, they're the uh, quote unquote geek or nerd, or they look at that as like a sign. Exactly. Of so, okay, they don't, they don't want to appear as that. So, okay, what can I do to make that acceptable? Because me and my, um, my, my partner, Kurt G's, we used to be out in the streets and doing what we doing. We would be the guys that sitting around talking about video games while everybody else around us talking about a bunch of, you know, all the BS is going on in the neighborhood. Yeah. We were sitting there having debates about who was better, Solid Snake or Gabe Logan out on the street corner. And, they was laughing at us. They would laugh at us, right? But then you would get two or three cats that would come over and join the conversation. Mm. They would meet some everybody else left. You know what I mean? I know all about that. <laughs> so I thought that was like, okay, that's you know, that's 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 crazy. So when it was time to, you know, because I did a bunch of stuff beforehand, but it, it, it came about that was you know we were going to make some content for some online content mm -hmm. and. Um, my friend Kurt was saying, hey, man, you know, we, we we super into video games. Why don't you make content based around video games? And I'm not going live. But uh, my first reaction to that was black people do that. It's like, OK, cool. Well, if I do do it, though, I want to take what I already do, which was hip hop and see if I can fuse it together to make it, you know, to make it more acceptable to a person like me five years ago. You know what I mean? Because at first I was like, no, and. You know, so if if me seeing me, I might be like, eh, maybe it's not that bad and go along with it. So the next person coming after me or they won't be as hesitant or as uh, fearful to kind of, you know, to say, hey, listen, I like what I like. Um, and I don't think nothing wrong with it. It's not like it's not like you like um, Nazis or anything. <laughs> it's right. video games and it's uh, 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 pop culture now. So. But it, it felt like in a way in the neighborhood, it was something that was, you know, just not not popularized. It was just something that was just like it wasn't glamorized. The word I want to use. It was just yeah. like, uh, you know, you play video games and you're like super into it to where, you know, publishers and and that's not the cool thing. And it's like, well, it's not really that bad. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so I thought it was me normalizing it by blending something that was familiar hip hop with games. And what's really cool about it is your channel doesn't necessarily just randomly talk about video games, but you go deep into different things that a lot of other gamers, I dare even say a lot of black gamers don't necessarily go into, and that's even benchmark tests and stuff like that. There's only a handful of people I have seen do that and running things on the best um, computer systems and things of that nature or having takes about video games or incorporating like as you do well we could talk about more a little bit, little bit later in this interview how you incorporate skits or different things and it's just fusing uh, not only just hip-hop culture but even black culture along with gaming and it's like making it inclusive for everyone to consume it actually goes into like the second question I asked you. It's like, what was, what made you come up with is more than any gaming is a lifestyle? Because it's like, you really incorporate lifestyle with, uh, incorporate a lifestyle when it comes to gaming. So what like created that saying for you? I mean, you, you, as you would know, because you know, I would consider you, I didn't even, it didn't even me consider you are a hip hop. So we, we, we come from this background where um, the culture was just as, as as big as the action of it. So, you know, the act of us making music is just as big as the culture that's surrounding it. So that's the the clothes, the the talk, the you know, the, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. so when I looked at, at gaming, I, I was like, I don't think I think there's a culture around actually playing video games, but I don't think there's a, a actual culture around it. So mm -hmm. It can be blended with everyone else's culture. 
when I do this, I'm not doing this to alienate anybody else and saying, okay, I'm just going to do black stuff. That's not. It's not. It's not trying to to separate people or anything like that. But you know, some people might look at look at it like that. I, I think about that often. Like, oh, they think I'm trying to separate, you know, these people from these people by including this into the content, which is not, you know, it's not what I'm trying to do at all. I'm just trying to infuse what I know in the culture that I'm from with gaming. And it, Avadon, you do it. You yeah. actually, you actually took flipping samples from games. And I'm talking about <laughs> some of stuff might not even be um, games people are fully aware of. But then they'll hear it and, you know, you deck it out with the gameplay. And now that person that might have just liked the beat, like, yo, let me check that game out. I did that for you with Astro Chain. I remember you and Jedi commented with Astro Chain with that. But that's how you be, you know, both cultures without being like overbearing, like, here's my culture uh, on to gaming. And that's not what I'm trying to do either. So the skits, the skits is like, I like Martin. <laughs> Like everybody else, right? Like I like Martin yeah. and uh, a camera and a couple of ideas gave me a chance to live out my Martin fans. You know what I mean? Um, dressing up as characters and writing different, uh, talking to different dia- you know, dialogue for different characters. Um, that's all come from liking Martin. You know what I mean? Like that, but which was a part of hip hop culture to me. You know what I mean? So I just tried to infuse all of those things into. Um, one, I guess you can call it brand or one package or, you know, even the slang, like, because when I just said package, I kind of want to say pause, which is a part of that culture and being. Yeah. <laughs> see, I wouldn't even think about that. See, the, I wasn't even, I wasn't going to go go there, but yeah, I see. <laughs> I, I see. Yeah. And I'm not the only person that do this. I've met other people that, um, that do that also, like yourself, to be honest, yeah. rob people, a bunch of other people that's taking, you know, the, the, the knowledge um, experience from being in that culture and then going into gaming and bringing it with them without being you know forceful about it just it's natural so that's that's pretty much what, what where gold chain gamers stand as a brand it's just trying to infuse um i guess hip-hop culture with gaming culture which which gaming culture itself is like i, I don't want to say it's um is faceless but there's no requirement to how you look there's no requirement to to how you uh talk it's just the culture of enjoying the the medium the art form. it's almost in the vein of watching a movie right but mm-hmm. if we can take other pieces from our culture and and snap it onto it we can morph it into something else completely so that's kind of with what, what what i'm trying to do with gold chain gamers that's what's up. That's what's up. It kind of reminds me, and I was talking about this with a really good friend earlier today. Uh, me and I were discussing about like Arby's. And Arby's, they're marketing, they're known for taking a trending topic and they will make like cardboard figures out of that trending topic while advertising their brand. So it's the same, it's the same thing you're talking about. It's the same exact thing, infusing you know what you have to offer with the current current culture and you're right gaming doesn't have a face there is no requirements to gaming it's even people with a lot of people have forgotten about this and we was we was actually discussing this in my discord the other night even people with disabilities it's, it's really cool like how you you know you're building your brand and with i i've always respected it it's like the skits, the skits are hilarious. Each one I've watched, from Black Kojima to the only no Kojima slander in here, like all, all. I, I forgot what, what, um, what you name the dude? I forgot his name. Zephus. There. Zephus the Internet. Zephus. <laughs> so it's like all these, um, all these different ideas, these Martin ideas, and I can even see a hint of a little bit of Fresh Prince in there too. I can see a hint of, um. Just old comedy sitcoms, just in there, and that's the that's the movie bluffing you coming out as well. If you yeah, a, with script with script writing, and 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 then that's another thing with uh, making content online. Which, to be honest with you, when I started, I didn't know that. Excuse me, I would go that deep into it as far as writing scripts, and dialogue. Mm-hmm. I did out of necessity because I couldn't remember what I was thinking about, and it came. 
okay, I got to write these lines. And then, of course, you improv them as you, you know, going along and, and working the, um, the the script. But I just, I didn't know that. Now I kind of, I enjoy writing more than I did as an MC. When I used to write raps, I used to love writing. And now it's like, it's different. I get a, a whole different kick out of writing that I, I never even thought of doing until the last few years when it came to making content. Like, mm-hmm. it just opened up a different, uh, different window almost like uh, another world and me and you was talking about um enjoying the process yeah and i haven't not enjoyed making a video yet not one not a single video whether it was even a live stream or and i don't stream often but whatever it was i i get a kick out of the process even when i'm getting started like and i'm i'm, I'm putting the thumbnail together and i, I got the concept the idea making the thumbnail i'm about to hit live to start talking i get that weird feeling like i, I can't explain it but you know what i'm trying to say like yeah like, went downhill on a, a roller coaster yeah but i felt the same thing like i, I feel it every time so i'm like I'm, we're we're about to create something anytime i get in, in front of a, you know a, a um a place to create. I get this this feeling like this is almost excitement. Like we are about to create something. You know, Abaddon hits me up. Now we're in front of the camera. I get the feeling we're about to create something. Like literally, like before we hit this record, but we're literally going over like camera text and everything. And I just just sharing just random ideas because to go along with what Sincere was saying, you guys have noticed on the past for the past almost over two months now. I haven't put out any edited content on my main channel and I've gotten to the point where where it's like I've enjoyed editing these videos but I also want to kind of like what Sincere says I want to enjoy my content and kind of like what you're saying it's like when you're making videos that you don't enjoy it's it's rough editing those videos and it's rough to even want to put out those videos like you want to put out videos where you feel comfortable watching it you love watching this video and you want to share that experience with other people so i that pit in your stomach you want to give it to somebody else exactly you want people <laughs> like for real it's like i showed you and a whole bunch and a, not a whole bunch but a handful just only a handful of people got to see the intro for the new video that's coming out well, by the time you guys are watching, it's already be out for the, the main channel. And that intro was something that I just said, you know what? Let me just have some fun with this. And that's the content that I like creating and I want to create more of. The reason I'm able to do that now is because I spent a large portion of my time creating earlier on in life, making stuff I didn't want to make. <laughs> so, so, you know, listen, we did music, right? do music you know you get you get you're in the culture whatever but maybe at that time the people you around or the music just being you know put out ain't quite your lane it's not where you are mentally anymore what i mean actually i was still kind of there i just just not what i wanted to make got it got it so my promoter at the time was a, a big party guy he went he, he, he's doing the clubs he's doing the parties he's doing the college parties so for me to catch any kind of, you know, notoriety, I had to make music that would fit into the scene that, you know, my partner was in. So I was making party music, but I wasn't a party guy. You know, I was Kawhi Leonard out there, bro. Like I wasn't even, you know, that's not my, my, my bag. So I would wind up making music that wasn't like, it wasn't real, it wasn't me. So people aren't stupid. They not know that they can hear it and know like, that's not you. Because when you hear somebody that's really into party and make party music, it's am- it's amazing. It's the music that that make the person that don't want to party, you know, might get a little two step in. So I was making this, you know, fraudulent, watered down party music, and it wasn't working for me. So I said I don't like making this. So ultimately, what that did was sour me into making, you know, sour me on making music. You know, now I still make music. I still write from time to time, too. Sometimes you got to scratch that itch and I got a couple bars. I can still get busy. But now that I make content and now that I kind of got a, a, I want to say a foothold in what I want to do. There's never a time I sit down and make something I don't want to make. You know, even if it takes 
time, even if it's a lengthy project where we got to film for a few days or something or write, then film, whatever it may be. I always, at this point in time, make content that I want to make. And if I'm not feeling it, I don't do it. Because now I know that the viewers aren't, they aren't stupid. Like people that watch you aren't, because you're not, you watch content. I watch content. I don't think either one of us is stupid, right? And we know when we see some fake BS on the screen, like that's not real. That's that guy's, yeah. that's not real. I don't want to come across like that. And I know that people have fun. It's going to sound crazy. Have, have fun watching me have fun. Yeah, that, that's legit. <laughs> that's legit. It's like pe- people, people like seeing people enjoy themselves. People like seeing people being positive and be- people being happy. No one likes seeing, it's almost like this. Why do you think we like watching the old sitcoms and everything? Because their performance was so good that you was convinced that they were real at what they were at. It was almost like they embodied that character. Like Martin embodied who Martin was. Will embodied who Will was. And Uncle Phil embodied who Uncle Phil was. To, to, the, to the point where it's like, you don't even call these people by their real names. To this day, when James Avery passed away, rest in peace, we would always say, Uncle Phil passed away. I ain't gonna lie, I was salty about that. I'm like, that's not his name, but I understand because like yeah. you said, the attachment to the character, you can tell that that man enjoyed what he did. You can tell that, like like the, the new Bad Boys movie, for instance, right? I know I heard a lot of people say, ah, it don't look good. But then I now I know people that saw it, right? He said, it's great. He said, it's great, they love it. I said, why? <laughs> he said, man, you could just tell. It comes off the screen that they didn't phone it in. They didn't just collect their money, say some lines, and get out of Dodge. They were into it. Those guys at that age, I said, right. there's nothing wrong with being that old. But if those guys, and not even at that age, but been doing it that long, where they could have been jaded. They could be like, ah, it is what it is. Just give me the check. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then they still go at it and like, you know what? I want this to hit like Bad Boys hit in what, 9-6 or 9-7 when it came out. Mm-hmm. It's amazing because that's something that I want. I, I want to be able to be uh, gray hairs, to be just as enthusiastic about creating as I am now. You know, w- no matter what the platform is, platform don't matter. It's the actual uh, uh, creation, sitting down with a concept in your mind, taking that concept out of your mind, putting it on paper, and then taking it from the paper and making it an action for someone to sit down and watch and consume. That whole process. I want to get excited about that every time. Nice. So I got to say this then. Um, you have said a lot. And before we go to our, our first break, I want to really just ask, like, you've, you had a killer 2019. Like, you've, you went up a couple of thousand subscribers and everything. You've put out a few benchmark videos, you put out skit videos, and your podcast, which... Thank you for having me on twice last year. Oh, we're going to put you on some more because it's, it's, you know, 2020 about to be turned. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But for what are you, well, I'll say this. What are your goals for 2020? Let's just that, let's just get right to it. What are your goals for 2020? Like, what are the things that you would like to achieve this year more than anything? Um, Not to say that I sit, I haven't, I've sat down and thought about it. I'm not going to say that I haven't sat down and thought about it at all. That, that would be me, disingenuous. I've sat down and thought about it. And it's not really, I never look at it from numbers. Numbers, I try to stay away from numbers because numbers is too easy to follow. You yeah. Look at numbers and it's going up, it's going down. And I, I, I've done a pretty good job about staying away from numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I look at myself, I look at, you know, what I did do and, you know, how can I improve on that? How can I make this, and not, not better, but, um, how can I make it uh, just just advancing forward? Like, where can I go now? Like, you mm-hmm. know. So, I want to do more elaborate skits. I want to do um, a short. I want to write essays. I want to. I want to do a bunch of stuff. So, I'm pretty sure I've already wrote like four of them, right? But I just haven't recorded the whole thing. Ain't no, ain't nothing to it but to do it, man. <laughs> I'm still, cause, I, cause I'm still working out the kinks of how to write these. You know what I mean? Yeah. How to come up with a question and, um, and um, one of the things I want to do, which I'm starting tomorrow, I guess, is get to more of these shows. So I want to get around the people. I want to feel what the energy is. You know, is it, is is sometimes misleading to look at 
the energy you're getting back from the internet, right? Mm -hmm. But it's different in person, right? So how do how does this person feel about me and what I'm doing when they see me, right? How do I gauge, you know, so I can take that information back to the to the lab and then be able to, you know, put that together with the things that I have on my mind to give it back to the people. So I want to get out more. You know, E3 was a part of the plan, too, but I don't know if I'm going to E3. Soured E3 up. But yeah, trying to get to, to, to around more events where you're around, you know, uh, gaming enthusiasts. That's the word I use. I don't. Gamers is starting to get this in my name, in my so I can't get rid of it. But gaming enthusiasts, people that are enthusiastic about um, this uh, this art form, this 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 genre of, of art. So it's like I want to be around those people so I can feel it. So I can. That's something that's 2020 I want to do because we see stuff on it. You see stuff on Twitter. I watch you tweet sometimes. Like, look, I'm tired of these people, right? But this is people's online persona, right? Now I've seen people, right? Nope, nope. We've met in real life. Yeah. I've seen people act away on the internet, and then when I meet them, be completely different. They don't talk as much. You know, they they type. A, I'm sorry, they type a lot, but they're not talking as much when you meet them in real life. So, and S I, sincere would tell you guys, I talk way more trash in person. Yeah, but but but, <laughs> but, but still though, you still kind of your demeanors the same yeah it is i don't feel like i'm talking to a different person when you yeah. go online it's the same person so i get around these people but that's because that's what the internet allows you to do so what i like doing is i like going to the events where you actually is bustling with people and they're we're all here for the same exact thing right. so that's when i can get the real feedback from this person not the online feedback the real feedback because now we're eye to eye you know what I mean? Now you can tell me exactly, not like no negative stuff, but what do you feel about this game? What do you feel about uh, this thing that happened? You know, I make videos about all kinds of stuff. What do you feel about the N word in gaming? What do you feel? You know, what, like what do you feel about these kind of things? And I and I literally have these conversations every time I go out. I can wear a gaming t shirt and it'll spark the conversation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now I'm around a bunch of people. I don't even have to wear the t shirt. I just gotta be there. You know what I mean? I can collect all of this information soak it up bring it back to the lab and be able to you know convert that into content so that's, that's what i'm looking to do in 2020 well definitely um i'm gonna show about too many games this year but i may definitely go out to, to i made i'm that's that'll be the one i'm most likely to go out so i may go out to one other uh convention this year but other than that i'm i'm focusing on being more low-key for myself my 2020 goals is more so is to make a more of an establishment of my brand is to actually make beats for breakfast more of a real thing and actually polish myself out more as a more of a sound designer than a producer because i've carried a producer title for so many years but i'm looking more so to be a sound designer when it comes to the realm of music and actually selling music products to people so i'm going to make sure that's successful before the year is out and to become a morning person i'm tired of being up late all the time <laughs> so hey, I'm, I'm more of a uh, uh, even though like we on a chill cast we it'd be like two o'clock in the morning we still talking you know what I mean we we'll talking but um, I always liked the mornings like even when I did music it, I felt refreshed my, my mind felt refreshed in the morning so when it was time to write or time to you know con conceive con you know con get into that conceptual phase it was easier to do it in the morning because like I'm awake the, the, the day hasn't bared down on me yet and um, making content has actually helped me a lot to, to wake up early and you know even if it's just okay before work let me write this down so when I get, get back I can just jump right in right mm -hmm. I'll have everything set up so all I gotta do is go you know what I mean because I wrote it down I know exactly what I want to do I'm ready to go um, doing stuff late at night I will always run into that. Should I? I start doubting myself. I start questioning things. To where in the morning, there's absolutely no question. Let's do it. I am up. I am ready. So, yeah, I, I would advise you to try getting some things done early in the morning. I guarantee right. you that you will feel a lot better because you oh, be trust too me. late, bro. I, will, I sometimes I watch a stream. I'm laying down in the bed. I'm not streaming now. Oh, 
oh man <laughs> for, for a minute i'm like i can't even stay for the whole joke i'm gonna be asleep yo listen man i i legit i legit uh want to because there have been times where i'll be up saturday in the morning it'll be from the night before i'll be up wide awake and it'll be like seven o'clock in the morning and i'd still have a lot of energy so i'll go outside i said let me just go out for a walk you know or if I had to, I'll use that time in the morning to run some morning errands and everything where, you know, everyone's still asleep. And there's such a stillness in the morning that is so inspiring to me. I, I, I wake up and I'm like, yo, I legit want to do this more often. And I told myself I need to develop a schedule change where I can do that, where I can literally just wake up early in the morning. like. Even it's like 5 a.m. so I can get some content done and then 7 o'clock in the morning just go out for my morning walks or whatnot and then just, you know, breath of fresh air when, when the roads aren't really as packed just yet. That's just something that... It's the packed shit. Huh? It's just in general, the world is... It's packed. not. It's just still. Like, there's, there's such a beautiful aspect about stillness that... I want to embrace more in 2020. I feel like you're more at peace and everything and... Yeah, that's something that's going to be my 2020 goal. But before we get rambling about goals, we're going to go into our first commercial break. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you watched this far already, make sure you guys hit that like button while you're watching. And we're going to play a small skit from Sincere. Stay tuned. That's me, Sincere. Out here acting the fool. Trying to look cool, trying to make some money, living a dangerous lifestyle. Now look at me, sincere, square, the gamer. Just trying to live and be safe. Welcome back, y'all. So I'm glad you guys took some time to enjoy that small skit by Sincere. But we got to um, talk about something. Now, Sincere, you've mentioned that you've been into hip hop and everything. And also you have showcased it that you've, you know, been into boxing. In fact, you've, show, you've showed videos, boxing videos and everything, you know, classic Mayweather videos. So I need to ask you one simple question. Do we need a Def Jam Vendetta on next gen, on next gen consoles? Nah, man. Um, the state of hip hop, man. The state of hip hop is different. Uh, 2004, when it was released, it was just like hip hop was gritty, it's grimy. You got to remember, Def Jam Vendetta was a game that it wasn't really about rappers. It just started rappers. It was a fighting game. You know what I mean? It was yeah. Brawling, right? It was a it was a wrestling game initially. So you take a wrestling game and you add rappers to it. It's technically not a you know a rapper game. Like, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? I said rap's not gritty anymore. Yeah, it's not. You know, it's it's, it's shiny and everyone is happy and making money. Is is there's no DMXs, no Red Mans, no Ghostface Killers. So. There's 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 no longer um, gatekeeping in in hip hop or rap anymore. You know, it's almost like how how gaming is. Gaming is you don't need necessarily an identity. Rap is almost the same way now. It's like you can literally be anybody and rap almost. For sure. Yeah. yeah Where at from the streets or anything like that. Whereas how rap started, you know, if you would go back to how it started in the, in the seventies. Mm -hmm. You literally could not enter certain parks if you couldn't rap. Like you, right. you. Well, you couldn't enter certain parks if you weren't from that area. That area well, we were. I was. I was trying to go that deep into it, but let alone if you was from the area. <laughs> if you was from the area, if you didn't, if you couldn't freestyle. Right. Nope. <laughs> you you know, could. But, I mean, things things evolve, things change, yeah. whether we like it or not. Hip hop evolved into something else because it became so mainstream. People made so much money that. Is is I call it happy rap. Even if they're talking about street stuff, it's still happy because everybody's portraying that they have, you know, they're rich or that's you know, it's that glamorous lifestyle. So I don't see that lifestyle translating into 
a brawling game. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Like, it just it doesn't go together. So, you know, I, I think I did a video on it like probably some time ago where I was like, man, it's, it's over. It's, we can't bring it back. We're gonna have a personal pole match. Who got the, the tightest the tightest chain? Like, oh man, what, what, what's going to be the basis of this game? It's it's just a it's a lost cause. Definitely, but um, but since we're on the topic of hip hop and you know the, and where you're from, you being from Philly and you having a background in rap, like who are some of your influences? Um, growing up, because you got to look at what early '90s, mid '90s was the yeah. was not really. Uh, uh, you know, kind of gravitated towards hip hop. So mm-hmm. for me, in that time period, it was Snoop Dogg. Man, Snoop Dogg was Yo. like my my. I ain't gonna say my introduction, but like the rapper, I was like that was the, the top rapper at the time. You know, you talking about nine three, nine nine four, nine five. Um, oh man, Snoop Doggy Dog, man, this is the the top rapper. So I'm listening to to that kind of stuff, even though I probably shouldn't have. I was like, what? 10 years old or something like that but man when you was 10 listen to this i was 10 or 11 listening to tupac so i get it so you had snoop doggy dog but as far as influencing me to want to make music to to want to actually you know do it myself and try whatever like that i know this is you know i ain't gonna say an obscure rapper but not the most popular rapper but uh e ness actually um I ain't gonna say inspired me to rap, but inspired me to want to write. I know, like, so people are like, what? How is that, right? Because people only know him from making a band or whatever that mm-hmm. was. Um, but I knew him, like, him and my brother from the same projects. And he used to come stay with my family in Germantown. And I used to sit in a room and listen to these guys rap. You know, they would have books and sheets of raps and just rapping in like a circle. You know the being passed and and i'm listening and i'm infatuated like wow i can't even believe these people that are regular people have this superpower to me like this special ability to rap and i would sit there and, and watch man and it made me want to go home and write i was like i want to i want to I, I was too afraid to write in front of them because they would laugh at what i was writing down but later on i would leave and I'm like you know what i'm gonna come back with something and I would, I would come back, I would write something, I would never rap it. And then one day I just say, you know what? The hell with it. I'm rapping my rap. And it was like, yo, that was, you wrote that? Next thing you know, it was on. So I was like, yo, I, I'm rapping, I wanna rap. And a lot of guys from my neighborhood, you know, started rapping also. So, you know, but Enes was the guy that was like, cause he was so exceptional back then. You know, this is before the making the band stuff or any of that. It was like, man, he can, he, he can go, this is, amazing it, 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 it sounds like something you can hear on the radio here on mtv like we just we thought he was gonna be famous then like he mm-hmm. was that good. so that's that's who, who got me initially to sit down and try to write raps on paper that's what's up man so with that so with that bringing this back into content creation and gaming like have you at least spoke about earlier about doing skits and always fusing the culture with hip-hop like do you plan for in 2020 to actually make more hip-hop oriented content fusing with gaming um i don't think i'm a as far as um like pushing more hip-hop into it because i think i i think i i got a nice balance between yeah um tech, gaming, um, culture. It, I, I think I'm balancing it. I'm juggling it all well now. So I don't want to mess up that that um, that alchemy of things. I want to keep that intact. Mm-hmm. But what I would do is I would add different layers to it. I, 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 I absolutely want to stream more in 2020. So okay. that's the kind of... Because, you know, people like the instant reaction or... Um, you playing a game and you get to see it right there in front of you. So I want to do more of that because I, I kind of that's probably part of my game that I've been slacking on the most is streaming. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't really want to mess with with the because I think I'm just getting to a point where I fully understand how to mix those things up properly without diffusing any of them. Like I'm not watering down the gaming. I'm not watering down the 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 other parts of it everything feels you know natural 
that's the word I want to use. It feels natural. So mm-hmm. I want to keep it like that. I don't want to add too much to it or take too much away to it. And I don't want to overthink things because when I did music, we all know you do music, you overthink it. Right? So I don't want to overthink this because um, I, I feel good about me time I say something I'm pretty good about, it, you know, and there's other, you know, it's technical stuff that I want to advance. So like, um, I bought a slider for my camera. I want to, you know, stuff like that, technical nuts and bolts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to add some things to the toolbox. But outside of that, as far as concept, conceptually, um, no, nah, I think I'm going to keep it, keep it in the pocket and see if I can add on to what I already got without diluting all right cool 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 we're going to take one more break and show you guys um another skit from sincere's library hope you guys enjoy it and we'll be back shortly oh no baby shoot him dead baby shoot him dead yo bro what's going oh my lord what is that smell So you've been sitting in here that whole time playing video games? Baby, I, I can't help it, baby. I, I, I can't help it. I, I thought you were looking for a job. What, what happened to the money that I gave you? See, I bought this. I mean, it is dope. But it, let me see that. <laughs> This is kind of lit. Got bullets on it. This is dope. But you ain't supposed to be having nothing like this. I know, baby. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm so sorry, baby. I apologize. You ain't even got nowhere to stay. You been sleeping in my room, playing my video games. Now you buying dope controllers with my money, huh? Come on, man. And what? Why your lips so dry? You got a whole glass of water right there. Welcome back, y'all. So we're going to get into the final stretch of this conversation. This is a great interview. If you guys have not already, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Because yep. this you're going to hear more, more and more content from other people outside of Sincere. You're going to see more people on here. And you're going to see more of my thoughts as you, as you saw last week as well. So, And if you like some game tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So I said gaming music tutorials. It's a long day, but um, speaking of gaming, I guess it's a, it was a gaming question. That's I had to ask sincere a question, and that's more so: what is one thing you would like to see developers incorporate in their video games that you really don't see too much? Black people. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, like, I think gaming has come such a long way and as far as putting things in there that I can right now the advancements in gaming are more social based um so I'm looking at games become you know more more accessible as far as being able to play with friends being able to share your experiences with other people outside of you know the interaction you're having with the game Mm -hmm. but as far as in-game things and like um, something that a developer could throw into a game that, you know, I guess um, would change the way you would play it. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man, because you look at the you you have the the evolution there. You got VR around. You have uh, augmented reality games like yeah. Pokemon Go and stuff. Labo. You you got all of these different styles of ways you can interact with gaming. So. Anything from here on up is a plus. It's like I, I don't, I can't exactly pinpoint something that they can put in because my earliest gaming experience, talking about nineteen, you know, that I can really remember, 1990, 91, 92. Yeah. and looking at that, looking at I don't know if you can see it, looking at these characters, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog and yeah. uh, 
and um, Super Super Mario. Like looking at these characters and looking at where they came from to where we are now, bruh, man. <laughs> it's like I saw Sonic on. Someone did a mock, uh, a mock um, Sonic on Unreal Engine, and that joint maybe got me thinking. I'm like, Yo, Sega, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, well, you know, Sega. Uh, I, you know what? I have no idea what they do. Listen, some property. Listen, listen, listen. I discussed this with Nintendo last week. Microsoft somehow somehow got Sega to bring over Fantasy Star Online too. Mm-hmm. That was something that money. I did huh? They spent some money, go ahead. They spent some money, we know, but that wasn't something that I was expecting because Sega has been like funny about that particular game. But to not get off too much off topic, to also answer the question, I would like to see, you're right, I would like to see gaming developers incorporate um, just more of a fun aspect of games and more creative ways just to have fun with the game. I feel like there is a big focus on resolution where I feel like there are some elements that are often forgotten. Like, don't get me wrong, resolution is, is great with video games. Like, seeing some great games on um, Final Fantasy VII Remake that's coming out is one game. You have Red Dead Redemption 2, you have Horizon Zero Dawn, you have The Last of Us. These are all fantastic looking games. I'm not against that, but it's... We have games like God of War, where it's like the ability to jump or everything, or some when games are a little bit just too linear. I feel as though the essence of what made gaming fun as we was playing them on the Super NES and the Sega Genesis, I feel like that essence is lost a little bit. I don't know. I, I can't fully agree with you because I do think there's some essence of gaming that's, you know, as far as fun, but I don't think it's that. I don't think it's even in some of those games that you name. Yeah. I think it's there. I think God of War is incredibly fun. I need to, I need, I need to play it. I have it. I need to play it. Uh, challenging combat. You know, I like that whole Dark Souls dodge roll counter block. I'm into that. So to me, that's, that's fun. But then, my thing with games is that I don't know if it's a thing where they decided that maybe consumers didn't think they were getting their money's worth because mm-hmm. now games feel padded. I feel like games are just overly lengthy for no reason. Just mm-hmm. just to just to justify spending sixty dollars. Right. I, I don't agree with that at all because it waters down the product. You take a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, just long for no reason um shoot uncharted 4 pad games just pad is it's not really meant to be that long he's added bs in there to keep, i call it busy work and i don't want to play a game that has busy work in it, you know what i mean um so that aspect again i wish they would take out of a game like like I, you don't have to do that to justify my purchase i think that's that's ridiculous you know you, you people time time is the thing that we can't get back we can get money back you can you can lose things and regain them. You yeah. can't lose time and regain it, right? Yeah. So you've taken your precious time on this earth and you're sitting in front of something for enjoyment. And it feels like in some games they're playing with your time. Yeah. And this where they feel like, okay, well, we don't want we don't want we don't, we don't want you to lose your time. So spend this amount of money to make up for that. Are we talking about Star Wars Battlefront right now? We're talking about Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront. We're talking about Shadow of War. Yeah. We're talking about a bunch of games that do, that do that because they say, okay, well, you don't want to spend the time, spend the money. And that's being developed with the money in mind. So let's make this game long for no reason so we can get a person to say, ah, I don't want to play that much. I would rather just spend the money to see the end of the game or to get to the end of the game. And that sucks. Um, I don't think that those games that you know some of them games you named because of resolution weren't yeah. fun right because take a game like mario odyssey one of my favorite games beautiful resolution right? beautiful game there was a solid emphasis and i believe that every platformer should be 60 frames per second but this game in particular had a emphasis 60 frames it needs to run at 60 frames per second and i think 900p right was it 900p or 1080 it was 900 and i think okay. it was it was 900p so, it, but it was it deadlocked at sixty frames though. I remember right. that it never did. But, but resolution 
being low didn't harm the experience of that game. Take a game like um, God of War and the resolution being high didn't change the nature of that game. Fair um, point. Even the jump button really didn't, because to be honest with you, a big fella like that don't jump. <laughs> That's a big guy. Like that, you know, yeah. he doesn't jump. You know, he's big, he is bigger than he was in, in the in the trilogy series, so I'll give you that. He's a grounded character and it, and the combat is different. They 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 absorb what the Souls games became. A genre on itself, right? And they ain't the only people that have done this. You know, mm-hmm. Star Wars Jedi Fall in order absorbed that that kind of combat. And these games are challenging because you have to. It, it, it takes a um, quick twitches to kind of. To, to, I, I like that challenge in those games. Mm-hmm. You know, it exists, and that makes it fun. You know, but it is a challenge, and they don't jump. There's no jump button in Dark Souls. You know, it's like a little hop. The guy just doesn't jump. I don't okay. think that that's like uh, a thing. And the emphasis on resolution is because. Bear with me. Video games and TVs go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you know, now, of course, you got handhelds. Like, you know, you got the Switch, which can be played on TV and a handheld. But for the most part, TVs and video games always were, always were connected. And they sell TVs by increasing the resolution of the picture that you're watching. Yep. So gaming consoles and gaming companies have to keep up with the demand of the TVs. So the resolution is always going to be a big player in video games because video games are played on TVs. So I don't think that that's a hindrance. I think the hindrance is things like the microtransactions, things like mm. game padding, things like um, okay. uh, DLC or, or, or restraining parts of the game to be bought later. Yeah. Those are the things I think that are, that are hindering gaming. Resolution... Is there an emphasis on it that you probably could see put somewhere else? Absolutely. But I don't think that it's um I don't think that that's the sole bearer of, you know, the ill will in gaming right now. Okay. Well, let me uh just chill away and actually just really kinda of like one last thing. And we just talked about we like gaming, we talked about, you know, hip hop and everything. Uh, just for like your skits and everything, which you know we've showed the people here for. Have you ever considered doing like a skit series? Not a series of skits. Like it's like your own show, kind of like you make. It's like you make a show and like it's a skit series. Uh-huh. Well, not quite. We want to do longer skits, like you know, write longer bits. Um, and and maybe stretch a concept out you know i do have a series coming out soon i don't want to spill the beans on what it is gotcha but it's like a five-part thing and it involves some of the characters some new characters and stuff like that but i don't want to um i don't i don't i don't really want to because because i don't know what tomorrow bring what new idea will come along so if yeah. i get stuck into this you know okay i'm gonna do a series and this series is going to uh every thursday and then one thursday you know i just don't have it you know what i mean saying yeah. so so you, you know i don't want to get pigeonhole because pigeonhole mean you know i like the fact that people like that i do that so I, but i don't want to be um held to that and not have something you know okay it's thursday damn i don't have it you know what i mean i don't have this this thing, this you know, because it's a series, so the series has to continue, mm-hmm. especially if it's going to gain momentum. And I don't want to be like, oh darn it, I don't have anything. For it. You know what I'm saying? So, or oh, I want to work on this new thing, but I'm stuck doing this old thing. You know what I mean? And yeah. one of my biggest fears is, okay, I do a skit and I make this character, people really like this character. Well, I want to do another character, and they're like, no, do that character. <laughs> And I'm like, I get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck, stuck doing this character. So. I get it. Well, I like I said, I, you know, I and I'm sure people who got to see you for the first time, they enjoy your parodies, man. So really keep at it. Oh, I really hope so. Keep at it, man. Well, this is basically about a wrap. Thanks for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate you taking some time to come out and just, you know, chop it up and just talk some, have a regular conversations, but but just with the camera on this time. <laughs> but um, do you have any advice for any aspiring content creators? 
Um, sure. Um, enjoy it. Make sure that it's something you enjoy. Don't do it because you think it's the cool thing. Um, don't do it because it's because somebody else is doing it. Um, do it because you thoroughly get a kick out of it. Whenever you turn that camera on, whenever you put the pen to the pad or whatever, that you you know you get like you said that feeling that pit where you know that you might be making something that somebody's going to watch and possibly enjoy that can get them through their day that can get yeah. them just something you know it's entertainment so you, you you are getting someone through something through entertainment so you know never be bigger than entertainment that's the that's the that's the best advice i can give is never feel bigger than the entertainment you know what i mean not saying you got to be the clown or you know the the the, the dancing monkey you ain't got to do none of that but know that whatever you're creating is for consumption of someone to entertain so they can be like i'm happy I watched this and it made me happy. So, or or they enjoyed it. You know, you ain't got to be like cheese and happy, but you know what yeah. I'm trying to say. Value in it. Don't be above the entertainment. Yeah. So, um, if you're going to make content, enjoy it. And most people are going to enjoy the fact that you enjoyed it. Simple. Cool. So, with that said, you guys know what we always say by the end of each video. You enjoyed this video you enjoyed this sound this audio well sound audio if you listen to this on on a podcast on anchor itunes spotify you enjoyed this content make sure you hit that like button make sure you hit that subscribe button and most of all most of all you make sure you share this with a friend this is Avedon and sincere and we are out peace peace